This is Peter's garden. Now, while he was out of town, the city witnessed a heavy storm. The storm caused a lot of damage to his garden. Now, after four days, when Peter returned, he saw that his favorite plant was injured. So he cut off this broken stem and took the rest of the plant home. Now he was surprised to see flowers blooming from this cut stem. How did this happen? Well, after the storm, when the branch fell off to the ground, then root formation took place because this branch got buried in the soil. And since root developed from the stem, it facilitated the growth of the stem and also blooming of flowers. So right after the storm, the branch fell on the ground, the branch got buried under the soil and slowly there was root formation, see, because of which the stem grew further and there was blooming of flowers. So this process in which a branch gets covered with some material like soil and is supplied with water is known as layering. Now let us recall vegetative propagation through cutting. What were we doing? Well, if there was an existing rose plant, we could cut a small portion of the stem, sow it on the soil and within a few days a new rose plant was obtained. Now what do you think? What would have happened if Peter had cut the stem right on the first day of the storm? Well, this stem develops because of layering. Now, in layering, the stem which grows on to become the new plant needs to be attached to the main plant for a few days till its own roots develop and those roots will be able to support the new plant. Now the main difference between cutting and layering is that in cutting the stem grows and is not dependent on the main plant. But in layering the stem which grows on to form the new plant is dependent on the main plant for nutrition. So if Peter had cut the stem on the very first day of the storm then the branch or the stem would have never grown or bloomed. So what happened in Peter's garden was natural. Can we do this process artificially? Yes, we can. All we have to do is bend this branch to the ground and we have to be careful so that it is still attached to the main plant. Now when we bend down the branch and cover it with a mound of soil, then root formation will take place. And this method is known as mound layering. Now what about these branches higher up? We cannot bend it to the ground. So what about them? Well in such cases aerial layering can be done. Now how is aerial layering done? Well in layering it is not necessary that soil is required. The vegetative part has to be covered with any substance that can provide that part with water. So what we can do is we can remove 
the bark of a stem and then wrap it with a water moss. So water is being supplied to this vegetative part and we cover this entire thing in a polythene bag. Now within a few days we see that root formation has taken place. So this entire process is known as aerial layering. So mound layering is the layering when we artificially put a mound of soil on this vegetative part of the plant and aerial layering is the layering which is done aerially or in the air where a water moss is wrapped on the vegetative part which supplies it with water, water and root formation is taking place. Now between these two types of layering, can you tell me which has the less chances of infection? Yes, mound layering will have less chances of infection because in aerial layering, we are removing the outer protective cover of the stem, which is known as the bark. Since we are removing this protective layer, the plant now is more susceptible to infections. So this is one disadvantage of aerial layering over mound layering. 